Hello everyone. We are going to solve problem 33 of chapter 18. The two two kilogram gears A and B are attached to the ends of a three kilogram slender bar. So because it's slender, which means that we can find the moment of inertia as function of mass and length, and we can ignore the thickness. The gear roll within the fixed ring gear C. So probably that's the most important part of this uh, question. The gears are rolling and also the, the ring gear C is fixed, which means that this one is not moving at all. So that's gonna help us uh, significantly. And also they are rolling. So if the gear is fixed, the point of contact here would have a zero velocity, which lies in a horizontal plane. That's also an important information, which means that we are not gonna have any gravitational force the work done by gravitational force will be zero and also there won't be any gravitational energy. If a 10 newton, mom, 10 newton meter torque is applied to the center of the bar as shown, determine the number of revolution the bar must rotate starting from rest in order for it to have an angular velocity of 20 radion per second. So this is the angular velocity of the rod AB. Remember that for this problem, the angular velocity of the rod is not necessarily the same as the angular velocity of the gears. Uh, also the question is asking for the number of revolutions. Sometimes when the question is asking for an unknown that is not common, students get a little bit of scared and they don't know what to, what to do with the problem. Uh, you need to set up your equations and then after you write your equations then you will see that how you can find the unknown. So it's better to start the problem and then try to figure out uh, how can you approach the number of uh, revolution that we are is related to um, our angular uh, our velocity. So, and also is related to the work that is done by our moment. Also, looking at the problem, we can see that we have an external moment. That means that our energy is not conserved. So we cannot use conservation of energy for this problem. We have to use the more general case, which is work and energy. So work and energy would indicate the initial kinetic energy, plus the work that we do on the sample, which could be positive or negative, would give us the final kinetic energy. For this problem, the start from rest, so the initial kinetic energy is zero. Work and the work that is done on the sample, we don't have any gravitational work because it's on the horizontal plane. So the only work would be the work of the external moment. External moment work would be M theta. So that would be 10 the magnitude theta. So you can see how theta would, would appear in our equations. Then the next task is to find a kinetic energy. We have three rigid bodies, gears A, A, rod A, B, and gear B. So we are gonna have three kinetic energy. We have the kinetic energy of gear A, the kinetic energy of gear B, and also the kinetic energy of our bar A, B. Remember that the kinetic energy of the ring is zero because it's fixed. So looking uh, at the problem, we can see that gear A and B are identical. They have the same dimension mentioned or they are the same distance from the center. So we can combine the two to make it easier. So for writing kinetic energy, we need the moment of inertia. And we have a choice whether we are gonna write the moment of inertia about the center of gravity or about uh, a fixed point. The advantage of a fixed point is that we do not need to include the linear component. Going to the problem, it, it tells us that we can assume that gears are a can be approximated by thin disk, which means that we can use the equation we know for moment of inertia of a disk for the gear. Otherwise, the gears are complicated and unless we have the radius of gyration, we cannot easily find the moment of inertia. So I'm gonna write the moment of inertia about the fixed point here, and I'm gonna combine the two kinetic energy here. So my kinetic energy would be two because I have two gears and they're identical would be half of I about the point of contact that I call it IC omega squared. And this omega is different than omega AB. They're 
gears are rotating with different angular velocity. So omega AB is the angular velocity of our bar AB. So I need to find its uh, omega. We kind of can call it omega A here A, but it's the same as omega B. Then I need to find the second kinetic energy, which is I A B bar A B omega A B. For this one, we have everything for it. Um, the moment of inertia, we can write the moment of inertia get about its center because the center is now moving. The bar AB is just rotating about this point O and this bar, the two gears are moving along the ring gear. So if I expand that half of what is IC, we know we can use parallel axis theorem and we know that would be three half of M A or M A or M A or M B M R squared omega A squared. Remember I write about A but here B is the same thing that's why I use factor two here I multiply everything by two. But for the rod is easy, I have everything and I know the moment of inertia would be one twelfth of M L squared if I write it about the center of gravity because the mass is different. So I'm gonna use the index MAB for the bar and A for the years and omega A. So if I had omega A then the problem uh, uh, would have been solved and but I don't have omega A so I need to use the kine kinematic uh, information that we learned in the previous chapter to apply here uh, to do so we know that point B is an interesting point because it's both on rod A B and is also on gear uh, B so or point A, that's, that's, we can say the same thing about uh, point A as well. So we can use that information to find the omega. But right here I write omega A, let's write its velocity at A, would be approximated from RC to A, omega A, or velocity at A, R O A omega A B. Here we are assuming point A is on bar A B, and here we are saying that point A is also on gear A. So therefore, the unknown that I have is omega A. So after rearranging, I can say omega A is R O A omega A B over R C A. So if I write it here, R O A, O is from the center is 0.2, omega A B is 20, R C A is 0.15, I can find omega A, which would be 26.67. Radian per sec. So you need to always write the, the unit system. Sometimes I forget it too, but that doesn't make it right. Uh, going back to kinetic energy, you would see that we have everything here. We have the mass, we have the radius, we have the omega A, we found it using kinematic equation and we have omega A, B bar, uh, A, B that the problem has given us. So we can find, after plugging in the values, we can find the kinetic energy to be 56 Newton meter. And if I use my equation again, T1, the work and energy, T1 is zero, U12 was the work of the moment, which was 10 times theta. And the final kinetic energy was 56. So therefore theta is 5.6. Or remember that would give us the radian. The problem is asking for revolution. So I'm gonna change radian to revolution. So if you have 
radian. I'm going to get rid of the radian, so I'm going to multiply it by a fraction that is 1. So I need to have a radian in the denominator, so it would be canceled with this radian. And I need revolution here. So 1 revolution is equal to 2 pi radian. So 5.6 divided by 2 pi. Therefore, our n, the number of revolution will be 0.89 revolution. So it's close to one revolution, but not quite. And for changing revolution to radian or the other way around, you don't need to memorize these things that multiply by 2 pi or dividing by 2 pi. Always multiply your uh, unit by a fraction that is 1. And if you want to get rid of something, just put it in the denominator. So it takes less than one revolution for this moment uh, to give us this angular uh, velocity of bar AB. For this problem, we had to use some of the knowledge that we have for kinetic, uh, kinematics of rigid body to, to be able uh, to solve it. 